that's all. That's all. Um, we're done. All right. <laughs> well, great, great job, great. everybody. So, uh, how's it going, Colby? How are What's you, up, brother? brothers? I'm great, man. It's a great day. You know, right now we just all got to be positive. That's right. We all got to be positive now. Yeah, I just gave Colby the hand signal to get a little oh, closer he did. to the mic. I'm an amateur. Look at me. <laughs> no. We've done this before. No, it's perfect. That's the no. perfect uh, distance there. I think Great, man. Welcome to the studio. Glad to have y'all in. Oh, yeah, glad glad you had me. Us. Glad you had me after having you here. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I need a shower further, now. Further away, yeah. Right there. Little, yeah, about right Test. there. Test. Like a good little mid range. We're editing all this, right? <laughs> no, we're no. Damn. This is all rolling. We are. It's fi- raw. We're it's figuring gritty. it out because um, so we're using um, uh, Nick's USB mic and we're using mine and we're also using a Zoom handheld recorder. This is just all we had on hand because we're we're uh, low on equipment because we're just starting out and we're yeah. just figuring this out. And, um, and I happen to have a zoom recorder and I brought that last second. I'm like, mm, it's better to have a zoom. Well, than you're not have you're a forging zoom. a flame. We're forging <laughs> flame. a flame. That's right. We're working, we're working through the, I think I'll figure it out. I just got to keep my elbow here and kind of propped. There you go. Just, propped. just, just like you fun. don't, you don't really give a shit what's going on. No, I'm just, awake though. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Coffee. Jolted. Appropriately jolted. Mm. Yep. So tell me about the podcast, fellas. Oh well, congrats! Uh, it's always good to yeah. We're on it, it right jump now. Jump out there, do it. Yeah, this yeah, is this is it. This is all it is. Yeah, yeah. And we're we're here and we're stuck and we're not leaving anytime soon. Yeah, yeah what uh, this. what sparked that starting this? Uh, what sparked it? Oh, man, he's what the flame. Look yeah. at this! Like we're, we're just turning right the podcast it. on I, its I, head. I, I, I appreciate your willingness to lean right in. I'm just uh, you know everybody. I always try to because everybody. Needs to hear yeah. about yeah. You, about everybody else. Yeah, uh, so enough about me. <laughs> enough about me. We haven't started. <laughs> no, uh, uh, it started because I'm uh, just genuinely interested in the uh, not well, not genuinely, genuinely, but generally interested in the creative process. And then uh, pretty recently, yeah. Nick started making a couple other podcasts. One called Mad and Dad in the Garage, correct, with his oldest daughter, yep. and then another one called The Beard Owner's Manual. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he that, just like. Great. Dude, he doesn't have a production background. Like, he just got in there and figured it out. He's like, I got a laptop and uh, I got a phone and I'm going to make a podcast. And I'm yeah. like, fuck yeah. And I started thinking about that. And I'm like, man, how interesting would it be to interview the the musicians and the, the people that, that I know just from playing in a band in Indianapolis, you know, met yeah. a bunch of cool people that are all creative in a lot of different ways. And you're definitely one of those people, man. Like, I, uh, I remember how we met. We met uh, when um, uh, Dead Birds Adore Us. And Goliathon did a show together at the Volrath. That's right. And uh, I didn't didn't even see their set. Like, my dad was in town, and I ended up cutting out early because he was in town and we were going to go hang out. But I remember Noah and Dan were really excited about seeing you guys. And and then afterward, they were really excited after seeing you guys, you know. And um, and then at that point, I still hadn't really met you, but um, then... It was like my birthday party coming up, and we decided to sh- throw like this big crazy party at my house. And uh, I was like, "Man, it'd be cool if we got the Goliathon." And we asked you guys, and you're like, "Yeah, sure." So like my first time experiencing you guys was in my basement where that's where great. I Dead never Birds, knew that. Yeah, where Dead Birds Adore Us usually uh, practice. So that's that was my practice space basically. And I just remember standing there, and I was kind of lit because of the you know we did have like a keg of Sun King alcohol and uh, alcohol Sun King <laughs> <Yes>. beer. <laughs> Um, alcohol was, kids alcohol. Sun, Sun King brand alcohol yes. XXX <laughs> that's right but um, I just remember standing there and just kind of disbelief that this was happening I'm just like Jesus Christ because uh, for people that don't know who Goliathon was they were a five piece band so three guitar players a bass player and a drummer right yep so that's five. That's five pieces, right? Is my math add up? Yeah. yeah that's and then, um, and then the lead singer, uh, Chris Perbasco. Not only is he a super talented lead singer, but he's also a very talented saxophone player. And he <laughs> broke that out yeah. in a very, um, gosh, such a creative way. Like your guys' vibe always reminded me of like a, a bigger version of King Crimson. Like, and because of like. Uh, 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 Chris's vocal style. There was a little bit of Led Zeppelin in there, you know, that, mm-hmm. that just wailing vocals and, um, yeah, it blew me away. And then like right around that time too, you released that, um, uh, that riot in Cairo is it riot in Cairo video. Yep. Yeah. The we live one you did at the radio radio. I think, yeah. Right? 
dude, that that video is just like so well done. Uh, who did that yeah. again? I think it's Monkey Eats Monkey. Monkey Eats uh, Monkey. Yeah. They, I, um, oh, shit, the name eludes me. I'm bad. I, I know some names. Sometimes faces are better. <laughs> Give me a face and lineup. Who did it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll find no. you. No, uh, it starts with a D though or something. Uh, but I, anyhow, uh, it was a duo at the time. A guy and a, a guy and a gal. Yeah, they it did great, dude. Um, they, they actually shot a few songs, and we were just choosing going to choose the best one. But I think that was a song we were leaning towards, also. Um, but yeah, we that was a fun band, dude. We all grew up together, and so I think there was an instant connection just from being childhood friends. But then we didn't even start to really get into the band together until we were in our twenties. So um, it was that member beginning Neil, who who was uh, from Gas City, but. He met some of my friends through, like they worked at Guitar Center and they just lo- other bands and local scene stuff, you know. But um, yeah, it's I remember meeting you guys. Well, not oh, I, I met you at the. Well, I guess I didn't meet you at that show. That's crazy. I didn't. I, know, we I may have like on. briefly met, but I I remember specifically that oh, yeah, I didn't I, uh, prior catch you guys set. played. I I remember talking to Dan though. I, we went up and we one of us brought up Opeth. I think me and, and the other one's like, dude, I love him. And then we just. From there, just hit it off, man. And then, yeah, you guys are amazing to me. I, really, you and Devil to Pay are my two favorite local bands I've ever ha- been able to play with, for real, nice, man. And nice. Just had had an awesome sound. You had all the visuals behind it, all the good thought. And I, actually, one of my favorite shows was the, the, I think that your last show where Dan and Noah ha- or had the fucking glass pane, or Noah had the big glass pane in front of his face, <laughs> and his body and his head looked huge from the crowd, <laughs> and his body was looked that normal. Show. No, it was just. It was, I think that was our album release out. show. Uh, yeah, that was our album release show, and we hung that up. And what <laughs> that was so was uh, it was uh, you know those old school projectors like in class yeah. where the yeah it was that that uh, that glass pane like out of the projector and put it in front of your face and it like distorts your face. <laughs> I, was, I remember so that when there were there were a lot of bands on that lineup. I think right and like uh, yeah, I think that was a Lazy Hawk show. Yeah, that's right. And I I remember that one. Oh, that's when I met. Uh, your old brother John Martin. I'm sure he doesn't remember meeting me there. But. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <Uh-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. yeah, that was in 2014. That was uh, September 2014. Yeah, I always love Noah's voice with that low processor. <laughs> <laughs> he's in songs. He's so he's such a stand-up co- comedian too. That's the thing. He was using an effect that really anybody could have, but not a lot of people do. But he did it in such a funny way, dude. Nobody can match that, dude. Right. Oh, we talked skill. about that extensively <laughs> the last last oh, time yeah. around. Yeah, I did you? I know. Well, yeah. he's hard. It was funny when he described all these different people. I'm like, dude, Noah's a chef. He is an artist and a musician and entrepreneur. He's all of it. He checks all the boxes. Man. <laughs> yeah, but um. I'm trying to rearrange this microphone. I think I'm getting some bounce back from you. Are you hearing that when he's talking? Are you hearing the, bup, bup? you know, probably we need to, let's put up some of this phone. Just hold it there. <laughs> I'm just going to hold it here the whole no, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, um, you'll be here. They'll be able to hear a great improvement during how about if we four. turn this a little bit. So we're putting you at a little bit more of an angle so you can scoot your chair yeah. if you want to like, and, yeah. And keeping yeah. this as well, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm really approaching out, this thing. I'm approaching this thing from a very hands-off perspective, like, I mean, not perspective, but approach, um, which is very different from my personal creative processes. My, my creative processes are very hands-on, like a little too much so, mm. where my perfectionism slows me down type thing. Yeah. And in this case, it's just like, I'm just going to let it fly, especially with these first few episodes where we're still figuring yeah. out like our process. That's sort of part of the, um, the allure, I guess, you know? Yeah. It's much, much more similar to my own process, which is just do it and figure it out as you go along. So yep. it works right. for me. I oh, appreciate nice. it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it puts you in a good comfort zone, you know? Yeah. It's, a, it's like a, it's a live jam thing. It's like jazz. Yeah. Jazz it up. <laughs> Very much. Yeah, it's still getting it, but uh, I don't know. Maybe if we... Uh, do, I, do, do I do this? Oh. How does that sound? Say Check. something. Yo. You know... I think it's a little better, actually. Well, yeah. there you go. It yeah, because yeah. it it's blocking me. I'm not now. It's hitting the foam and bouncing back at me. I, oh, can, I hear it now. You know, maybe right here. Yeah. You just got <laughs> thirty percent sexier, Colby. Thirty <laughs> percent, like butter in my ears. Yeah. I'm trying not to, you know, 
No, you're good. You're good. Oh, well. Yeah, uh, um, this room. Is yeah, we don't have to keep that up. I, I, I want to at least be able to see you. I think. Uh, I think what's happening is your voice is coming back and it's hitting this wall and it's hitting my mic. Oh, so, makes sense. I mean, that's not a big deal in, in terms of editing. Like, you know, like whenever I'm hearing it, I can just chop out the other microphones. And then yeah. when we chime back in, it's it's okay. We'll figure it out because it's not happening. Happening. I said it's not happening with uh, my voice. I might cut that out. Got other panel showing up little, this week. That too. was a little much. <laughs> I had to do a little bit of a test there. But uh, no. Anyway, so Goliathon. Um, Super awesome band. I was always really impressed with uh, with uh, every one of your performances. Such a big sound, Thanks, especially yeah. with the the three guitars. And then you switched from uh, bass to keys pretty frequently. And then mm -hmm. Chris would change from playing guitar to singing to breaking out the saxophone. Nice. And uh, just had such a good vibe, man. And like we always loved playing with you guys. That was just like our Goliathon shows are some of our favorite for sure. Thanks, dude. Yeah, it was it was a fun band and seemed to really have a good following of people. I mean, that's I try to be modest, but after well, I heard myself down the tunnel, that's funny. I try to be modest, but I mean, you get more confidence after you have enough people that you respect and their opinion and musical ability to like really like you. Then mm -hmm. like okay, you know. I can have more confidence because I mean, a lot of these people aren't gonna bullshit. I know me. I don't. I want to be. I'm gonna be nice and respectful always. But if I go out of my way to talk to y'all, I mean, that means I like it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the right kind of validation for sure. Yeah, and that's uh, that's pretty typical within music. I mean, not a lot of people will like really go out of their way to tell you that they like your music if they don't really like your music you know what i mean like mm -hmm. maybe if it comes up in conversation and they're like oh yeah okay you know like then you're like okay well you're not that into it but when people go out of their way to like tell you you know like i really enjoyed that you know like then you're no you're like okay it's thanks man yeah. yeah feels good it, helps. it does not that i don't appreciate everybody's but it's we get enough validation from other people that you have you know similar respect for in a way yeah. right so yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you also have another project called Status Fo, which is equally impressive yeah, in my thanks, opinion. Man. It really reminds me a lot of uh, of King Crimson and um, man. There's just there's a lot happening in that record. So you you mainly yes, did man. that one by yourself, right? Uh, no. Um, actually, I had a lot of people involved, but I as far as I I, I started it all just from ideas I had. Mm -hmm. Um, I did play a lot of instruments on it though. So I mean, I I wrote, I, I did it myself as far as wrote all the songs and you know lead singer for the first time. So and all the lyrics and um, I tried. I'd let everybody kind of do their thing on their parts. I try to you know, mm -hmm. I mean, like that philosophy and you know, if, if you're asking people to be part of something fun, like just let them do their thing. I mean, you can give some suggestions, but they always have, usually are gonna have a better idea because that's their specialty. But, Hell yeah. Um, I had like four songs. Um, I, I took over to Ryan over at the barn and, and um, started those. And after a while, we're like, okay, because Ryan is a drummer, so I'm like, we need a few more members for sure. We need a couple guitar players. And I'm like, well, Derek, who was in Goliathon, a good friend, I'm like, he's he definitely would be a good fit. And then he said he should hit up Larry, his brother-in-law, and I did. And Larry's been an integral part of the band. and. So us four um, recorded those four songs, and we did a couple more, and it turned out to be ten. And then, you know, I had one or two probably we just we kind of cut out, but we got those on there, and then we we were starting to go through to mix them, and so it, it was all kind of I want to say fly by the seat seat of your pants, whatever that slogan is. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we we just. We just Sweet. built it all from scratch, really, which just was let, cool. Let it be what it was. Yeah, yeah, and we kind of put it together, and it was it's a unique, cool record. And um, but there was no, the expectation from the beginning, like it was all songs and a new band that I was starting. And Ryan was helping me, you know, get these songs together and produce them. And we brought on other members, and it was kind of unique though. But because by the time the record was done and we released it, we already had a couple couple members not a part of the band anymore. You know, just because it took a few year process and really. It was done with, we're about to do this record, not, you know, everybody that got involved wasn't necessarily like full time live person. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but we, got, we had a couple guitars, bass, you know, vocals and drums, and then 
We brought on Mark Ortwine to play horns, which anybody around town here knows who that is. So he's a cool dude. But uh, per Ryan's request, and it turned out good. He did a handful of songs. It was really good. You know, like bassoon, which is crazy <laughs> awesome to yeah, hear on some yeah. rock nice. stuff. You know, saxophone. We even had you did pulled you put out Barry sax in there. Yep. Oh, he, King yeah. Man, right. I was listening to oh, that yeah. on the way here, oh, and I, I just yeah, immediately dude. keyed in on that. Nice. Oh, fuck yeah, it. heavy. Yeah, yeah, Mark, so Mark did great, man. Even we had him pull out the flute on one song, <laughs> so yes. propagated sounds. He's got flute in there. Yes. Um, so yeah, really add a lot to the uh, those songs. And then my friend Warren, who plays pedal steel on the record, he he was in another band with me at the time, a friend of ours, Jeff. It was called the Dead Weight. It's Americana type stuff, and. We we known each other for a while, but we, we reconnected through um, through this other project. I'm like, it'd be cool to have you play a song on the record, you know. And that started at that, and then he showed up, and we're like, dude, that's awesome. Like, let's try another one. And then like, yep, all right, a few more. So we did four, and then he he's really become a part of the full time band. He's playing guitar now too. So we we got that record done, and um, Jason got involved and mixed it. And, finished mastering it and uh, sent it and then we released it. He played a lot of lead stuff too, you heard on there, a lot of the uh, big solos. Um, and that was kind of, fi you know, finalized finishing touches on it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Ryan's got his studio, he's in a million projects and so he's got a lot going on. Jason's a producer and he's got a family, so he's got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And Derek, who played guitar, he's still one of my best friends and there's always will be. It's This is a, this is a perfect example of how if, you, if you're like transition away from the project, here's how you do it. You know, he's just got to a point where he's like, man, you know, I'm getting busy with school and work and, you know, him and his wife have been together for a couple of years at this point. So, uh, you know, we basically finished doing the record, but we hadn't played live yet. We're going to wait to release it. And it, it took, you know, a few years to release this record. It almost took, you know, so we were involved with it a lot and he decided to move on. I was like, cool, no worries, man. And um, like, cool, you know, it wasn't like... It, he didn't drag his feet. That's what one bad thing of like, sometimes people, it's it's too hard to, to try to cross that bridge and then, or tell, at least be vocal about it. And then they'll just start maybe not showing up or something. It's like, no, just, you know, just say, you know, respectfully, you can't do it. And yeah. it was all cool. Is you know, like I said, we put this, it was all about putting this record together and we did. And then, you know, I wanted, I have a whole second record. I'm I pretty much, all the songs are done. I mean, I have even a couple of new ideas that keep, popping up so it might be other songs on it but I've been working on these songs a year and a half some of them two, two years other ones like a few months and uh, even that first record I mean there were songs King Man for example is a piano riff I had for mm -hmm. probably 10 years you know another mm -hmm. wow. a couple of the other songs we come up with on the spot or within a year of the record and they all just seem to fit and this ne next record I've been working on a few for a lot for a couple of years like I said even before this last one was done and even some of the lyrics have become very relatable to current times and it's, it's pretty cool, and I'm like, I didn't, obviously I didn't foreshadow it, or kind of did, but people might think, oh, you wrote these about this, and I want to be like, no, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's getting released, oh, it's getting on. released right now, but it, this was actually written about this other stuff, you know, a while yeah. back, and it's got a different lyrical theme. It's, I'm, I'm really excited about it, and so basically, to kind of sum up that first record, after that, you know, Derek left, and then Ryan and Jason, you know, was a part of too much other things, and, 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 you know, weren't going to be a part of the live show. And they, you know, understood that. And that was kind of mutual understanding because of the timing, time it's going to require and expectations, that type of thing. So I um, I talked to Chad from Devil to Pay and the Evan Four, and he's in, um, but actually to link in, beginning of last year, um, I think it was the beginning of last year, he hit me up and his band, the Avon Four, Star Wars yeah. themed, cool rock, punk rock band. Oh, those guys are awesome. Oh yeah, man. He's like, hey man, we need a bass player. You wanna would you would you be in for that? I was like, hell yeah, dude. I'm, <laughs> nice. I'm like, I didn't even have to hear it. And I'd always respected him and always, you know, loved his drumming. And so any if he asked me to jam, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I learned the there are a couple records and we played a few shows and um you know, actually about to work work on another one. We were, you know, planning nice. on starting the next record before all this shit hit. So I'm sure mm -hmm. we'll get to it here into this year. But so we just, we just started jamming together, and then I, I kind of be, got the need of a, a live drummer and just a drummer going forward. And so I messaged him, sent him the record. Him, and his wife loved it right away, and she's like, "You should play with these guys." He's like, "Oh, I buy it." And so now, so he joined, and so it's me, him, Larry, and Warren, and. 
so for the first record, Warren's picked up guitar on her last song. He's actually a guitar player by trade, and he went to that Atlanta Art Institute, I think. I believe. Nice. So he's a, he's a great all-around player. He just happened to play pedal steel on the record, and that was kind of a cool specialty. But he, and he also plays bass on some songs, so he's been able to help be kind of an all-around utility guy. So we're able to pull off these songs with four of us and pretty damn good to where, you know, it's not the exact same as a record, but it's it doesn't have to be. And it's, it gives a cool, unique live experience. And we've oh, already, yeah. this next record has been us four, and that's kind of the, the, the goal at it too. I'm like, I'm not going to make it as extravagant. I aim, it, aim to make it sound great and just as good and actually better. You know, you always strive to make it better. And I, I think these songs are more, more mature, at least to me, more unique and kind of weird. You know, it's just, <laughs> but... Um, some of, them, some of them I've had for lyrically for years, and other ones are newer, and I still have, um, you know, Larry's going to contribute a couple to this record, I believe, a couple of his song ideas, so um, he's been real active, and so, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the focus, and even this room, as we kind of get it soundproofed, obviously it's not ready yet, <laughs> but, um, you know, sound condition, everything, and I'm going to try to start tracking the next one, and um, we actually had our show... Schedule at Radio Radio in April, and then that got delayed <laughs> as our first show, too. We spent years get, like putting the record together, which is fine, though. It's like I've built patience. I'm not worried. Yeah. It's giving me time. I feel like I'm becoming a better singer over time. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. Sorry. I don't care. I'm a, I'm a running Oops. producer and listening at the yeah. same time. I was, That's, uh, that's I how was, you do it. I was trying to like drop my own level and see if that affected that echo. Um, but on a new level. I'm, that's uh, all good. I'm thinking it'll, it's coming out of the left channel, that mic. Are, are you hearing that? A little bit. A little bit? Is it coming out of your left ear? Uh, I can't tell. What, did you, you, did is you... it coming out one ear or the other? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, but. you don't you don't hear that? Okay, that's good. I definitely don't want you to hear that because yeah. that like that would fuck me up like hearing a hearing a constant echo. Kind yeah, of thing. no, I don't have echo. Okay, good. Nope, that's pretty good. I'll cool. Try, I think man. I found the best spot Perfect. right here. There it is. So there it yeah, is. Man, you just, sound like you're in a bo vocal booth, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to stay steady here. Beautiful. Yeah, man. So I really just I'm ready ready to knock out this next one. I'm actually playing guitar on a lot of them. Um, Nice. Because most of the songs in the first record I wrote on acoustic and this just, you know, feels like a good way to write songs or this happens to be where I'm writing stuff and I've been playing a lot more guitar. So mm. a few of these, I'm, I'm a finger pick and I play kind of a precise thing to where it's, it makes more sense to me just play that and not try to teach one of the guys to mimic me, you know. And that's where Warren's coming to play. He's going to play bass on a couple of them. And he played pedal, steel on most of the others, and maybe some guitar. Um, and I've got a couple on bass, maybe a couple on piano. But so I don't know these newer ones. A lot of the newer ones I've just been writing on guitar, and it's almost becoming like it seems like comfortable, right? And mm -hmm. singing, singing to it, it's like I've got it down. But I think we'll mix it up. We'll be bass and guitar going on, you know. And some of them live might turn out. I, you know, right now I play a couple um, songs on bass live that Derek recorded on because I played acoustic on the first record for uh, Seize What's Around and Truth Leaks Out. Mm -hmm. And I played acoustic on a lot of the songs, but on that one, um, it was more, um, it, it was higher in the mix. So it was more like a key part on those two songs. And I wanted someone else's mind on bass. So mm. Derek was a, you know, it's a great all-around player, so I had him play bass. And but when we started learning him live, I'm like, well, now he's not playing, so I'm I'm gonna play him on bass. And um, I don't know. I want. I wonder, like, because to me, and I'm I'm not any person that anyone should ever like listen to in terms of musical critique or advice. But I wonder because that seems from from my very limited perspective to be a super innovative approach, right? To to assembling a piece of music, a work of music using so many different people interchangeably based on what their strong suits are seems yeah. like super efficient for one. And I mean, I know you said it, you know, some of these you're like taking a couple of years on, which I, I find that parallel really mm. interesting. I know you've got, you've got a song that you're going to be releasing that you've kind of had in one form or another for what, like more than 10 years, 11 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, nice. and my mind is blown by that. Like the patience that musicians have, no, you don't is have a choice. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, I guess that's probably true of most like good forms of art, right? But 
I mean, like I live in a world where everything's much more immediate. It's like, uh, take some time putting some of the components together, assemble them, tweak it, but like then pass it to someone so they can guzzle it, you know? Like, sure. <laughs> so, but, uh, I don't even actually remember what my initial point was no, there. Are, but you, I, you, made, you led to some good points. And I, I think one of my key things in being creative is just compiling ideas and letting them flow out whenever and wherever and having no yeah. stipulations or restrictions or too many, you know. Too Unreasonable many, expectations. Yeah, expectations yeah. or don't be too critical on yourself. Yeah. But don't try, I want to say don't try too hard, but don't. I think be in, in, uh, just constantly... Uh, involved in music, whether you're jamming, if you pick up a guitar somewhere, or you're listening to stuff, or you're just if your if your creative mind's constantly on, I feel like mm -hmm. you, today's age is great, man. I've probably the last 10, 10 12 years since we've all had smartphones, uh, using the voice recorder, a lot of musicians do because you can just track hundreds and thousands of ideas on here. Yeah. And um, hundreds and thousands, not hundreds of thousands. We need like both. Yeah, <laughs> hundreds need, uh, and thousands and hundreds uh, of thousands. Oh, millions, not? billions and billions, billions and, and billions, billions and billions and billions. And billions. And billions. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. So some songs, like you're right, some songs take years and years. But because you have the ideas, and I don't, I don't think you should ever force the ideas. Yeah. Other songs, you come up within a week or a few days, and at least the structure, and then. Um, but I think having a lot of ideas, just like an artist, if you just had a lot of uh, canvases and you had a lot of ideas going, or I don't, I don't know if you just you don't put as much pressure. And I feel like I've been in bands most yeah. of my life since middle school, and I feel like you have to learn, like anything else. One of the things I've learned from being a part of other bands, it's like don't be too critical of yourself, mm -hmm. but also be you know be thorough and be do critique yeah. yourself. Don't sure. don't just put out crap or you know, I, and I think the more active you are, the more willing you, you are to just, you know, record any and every idea. A lot of them aren't any good, but the ones that are really good, I feel like you're going to stick. Right. Well, I think one thing that I'm kind of seeing, um, like now, you know, now that we're getting into this conversation, it seems like, because you mentioned uh, how some of the music that you've been working on a while, but are going to be releasing is more timely than it seemed like it would have been mm. initially. So yeah. if you, if you're removing that judgment on yourself and you are just creating freely and you're not overthinking it and you're just banking it, if it doesn't seem right, right now, just a little bit of added patience, you know, societally or whatever times might come about where that is hyper relevant and it's just like the perfect time mm. to drop it. So I really like that kind of macro, like, puzzle piece sort of situation. Yeah, That's, dude. I never thought about that before. Well, That's really great. Yeah, I think a lot of art is timeless too, music and film, because mm. and art, you know, even paintings and things that decades old, but you listen to lyrical themes or things, it's like, well, damn, you know, it's so broad. But the more I've been, during this lockdown, I've been watching a lot of history and I love science-based things. Sure. So I spent a lot of my evenings just watching YouTube, just as many things I can on those topics, but you learn about history and how all these societies operate and work and there's always there's, there's always power and there's always going to be manipulation and things it's just how it goes you know mm -hmm. as much as i love our country I, I do love our country i think we got very lucky to be born where we are anybody has sure. complaints i'm like look and look, look at the africa middle east like you're, you're lucky to keep living you know yeah. and if you're living you, you're fucking miserable so we live in a great place, but you can't be naive to there's higher powers and there's some, there's some bullshit going on and yeah. both yeah. parties are full of shit, man. And yeah. <laughs> I, I was a part of it. I was, you know, I was a Bernie supporter in 2016. I spent a lot of time and effort. I went, I was a delegate at the convention, state convention. And I saw from the first hand how corrupt that bullshit is. And, uh. uh, man, I, I have, I could spend a whole podcast on that whole <laughs> event. I actually wrote one song, Sour Grapes Resolutions from, Nice. I was I was told it's too too much to get into, but that that line <laughs> was said at this convention, so I took it, uh, just inspired a, a song. But um, I don't know. That really made me after that whole thing become a little more independent, libertarian in a way, but not extremely. But more caring about myself and even you and your loved ones. Because at the end of the day, whoever's running shit, like world power is going to keep running it. There's yeah. whoever's there next WWE star to be our president or whoever. And that's how it is. And, and this is ultimate. Like, Vince McMahon, like, could borrow this storyline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. But um, anyhow, they, I think, 
you know, my first record even had some like those lyrical themes, and that's another thing. I never, I never set out to write certain lyrics or have a song topic on my head. It's just like usually it's all musical at first for me, and then right. melodically, and then certain words just pop out, and then I write them. I'm like, oh shit, like. I'm like, that's cool that these make sense. Or I'll have a certain word. I'm like, what's, does that word, and it'll pop pop into my head as I'm writing these lines. And then I'm like, oh, this fits perfect. I hope it means what I want, want it to mean. And like, cause I don't quite know. You know, some words are like, what exactly does it mean? I look it up and it's like, yeah, it fits, cool. Or, mm -hmm. um, but the first record was a lot of, uh, you know, I worked at a corporate inside sales job for a textbook publisher and, uh, you know, ate my soul after a couple of years, made good Hell money, yeah. but I just couldn't do it, man. And so I started this band and wrote, kind of a lot of that lyrical theme. And I had a business a degree from Butler. And so it, um, I learned a lot about the corporate world, but I, you know, there's good stuff, but there's some negative things, man. And even being a part of the sales world. Uh, so I left and inspired with this band. Some of, so a lot of it's societal things. Some of sure. other of it, other songs are like political or, but, but not direct, but more like people, you know, wake up your mind in a way and just like, mm -hmm. I don't know. But, it's it's led me. I've I've become a lot more. I won't say apolitical, but in a way, and more. You know, I've got pushed right by a lot of things, you know. So, mm -hmm. but I think that's the best. You don't extreme shit really isn't good, you know. Mm -hmm. it really isn't. That's why even though our system set up like you got to collect people, but the, all those people are bought out. So it's a fucking show. <laughs> yeah. dude. It's a show. Just you know, just live our lives. But that's what I've realized. I can waste too much of my own time on that bullshit. You know, mm -hmm. fuck it. Yeah. Care about make my own, make my own money. That's the thing you can. You can be mad or and other times be like upset with society or things, but you gotta just you gotta take advantage of what there is too. Sure. You know? But I don't know. This next worker is different, you know. I um, more personal relationships and things, you know, and and many many different relationships that I went through that with people I'd had you know been connected with, and so th these next I don't know. This next record has a lot of the lyrical drive, but I feel like a lot of them are still, um, can be vague enough to where they apply to things, but, and it, I didn't even see it set out to that either, but I feel like when you, you know, life changes when you are with people for years or whether it's friends or girlfriends or even loved ones that pass anything, right? It's, your life changes and your mind's just in a different, you know, different state, right? Yeah, your subconscious yeah. is in a different state. So sometimes words that come out, it's like, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, so that's where this next one's heading. And like I said, I'm trying to make the musical lineup different. And I mean, it's, and that's kind of my goal too. I don't want to recreate what I've already done and move on to the next. And we make it evolving. And I don't know, maybe play play a live show eventually. Yeah, yeah we're so close. Yeah. It was like I don't it, know. Was, it was like fate laughing at us. You know, <laughs> your show, first show, we finally had it, and then it delayed. And I then was excited delayed. for that one too. That that had Devil to Pay on the card. Yeah, too, DTP right? yeah. and Toxic nice. Reasons. Nice. Yeah. So when was that supposed to happen? It was supposed to happen April 30th, I believe. Then it got uh, pushed back to June 5th, and it got delayed again. But now I think it's aiming end of July. Now end of July. Yes. The I'm, way the way I'm we're there. trending, our society, the way our city's trending, it seems like that is doable, but. You see these current, these next spikes, and we could get all into all this shit, dude. And, and yeah, yeah, no telling where. I know that's that's one thing of all this. Like I'm trying not to overplay now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I take advantage like all the creatives right now. Like hope we've got we a lot of us have had time. You no, know, I do yeah. I do video production, live sports. So that was one of the big things to get shut down. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I had a lot of gigs booked too. So I lost <laughs> a lot of money, but you know, thankfully they had that contractor unemployment program nice. and I was able to get it and so and I, I trust me I don't like it but it's like fuck it man I'm gonna take my money I had a lot of money I just lost so yeah to, it's what it's there for man I know <laughs> exactly but um I, I felt like I've used a good amount of my time on music I hope I hope you know mm -hmm. but same deal it's like I I couldn't I'm not lyrically motivated and I haven't necessarily written songs about these times because again I don't it's just my approach. Everybody's different, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Singing and songwriting and all this word um, selections. Just I talk, figured out myself, you know. I talk ba took bass and piano, but you you start doing enough musical stuff, you can learn other things and mm -hmm. singing along to records of some of my favorite singers and being able to tell that I'm not hitting the right notes yet. So just work <laughs> through it and grind through it for years. And yeah. um, I don't know. It's 
it's been fun. You know, I never knew I could, could be a singer or would be. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> you but, sound great on the record, thanks, man. man. It sounds good. It's, yeah. uh, I mean, as good as any singer, you know, like thanks, it's, dude. uh, that's a, that's definitely a hard part with music because it's, uh, your, your voice is so much more personal to you than, than like a bass riff, you know what yeah. I mean? So if you do a bass riff or you even play bass live and you mess up, nobody's going to know. But if you sing and your voice cracks, everyone there knows you fucked up, you know, like <laughs> oh, everyone knows that was not supposed to happen. Yeah. And do that's... I even like this band anymore, you know? <laughs> You're right, man. That can happen. Uh, well, that leads into, um, on the, the bad, the flip side of that or the, one size that makes some people too um, critical of themselves, or they just. Mm-hmm. But it, there's no substitute for the work. You know, that's another yeah. thing. My cardio is damn good, man. I run a lot, and like a lot of the, a lot of motivation is just to be fit, and I feel good when my blood flows. And I played sports growing up, but we got all this extra time. I was I already had a good gym routine, but now it's like I'm just doing in-home workouts or running. But uh, like even recently, but you know, I time do the running keeper. But part of me is like, man, if I'm gonna be a singer and be Fucking for real, I need to keep that up. And it really does yeah. translate if you're singing hard notes. And um, I spent a couple of years, when I lived in Shelbyville with my brother um, a few years ago, and I was working on the record. I just started recording vocals, that kind of thing. Um, I I drive from Shelbyville to Indy about every day for work and you know music stuff. And so most days that's 30 minutes both ways, give or take 30 or 40. And I spent a lot of those hours singing along on my car, whether it's to our demos or to a lot of these records I like, Chris Cornell and Ian Thornley and shit that vocalists I love that are fucking badass and really hard to sing. And it, it really helped me for sure. And then other songs that artists I like that, um, even Michael Iderfelt, you know, some of those songs are, it's more in my range too. But yeah. but I, I've, uh, I've learned to be able to sing some of these Cornell stuff, man, and even Ian Thornley. And I feel like it was just years a couple of years of trying it, you know, and working towards it. Now, you know, I'm not not by any means I would say them or as good as them or have their same ranges, but I feel like it's been good stuff to try to learn to because it's challenging. Mm-hmm. And I've learned ways to pull off these notes that I can't explain. And it doesn't hurt, it doesn't strain, so I feel like I'm doing it right, but it's a weird different delivery from your throat and like a way I I don't. I can't explain it, but I. It took me forever because I'd be singing and shrieking and like being shrill, yeah. trying to hit these notes for a while. And I'm like, man, I can't do it. And then, then it, it almost like clicked one day. You feel me? It's weird because some of my syllables are strange in a way, but it's like you just, I just write it out and yeah. you know try to improve at it. But I don't know. Yeah. Just brought a brought a brand new like vocal system online that you didn't know existed. Oh, that's, yeah, that's exactly. Super cool. If you if you read from what Chris Cornell he used to always say, he said you'd be amazed what your voice could do if you just lock yourself in a room. Mm. And it's a great quote, and it's like you can. It's true, you know, and it's really hard. I'm I'm nervous. I'm one of those people that I don't like to sing around people. You know, usually mm-hmm. like I don't mind to perform. I have no. I'm not scared or anything, but. As far as just like practicing and things, I'm like yeah. more personal. It's That's just rough. a personal thing. Yeah. That's where the car, this this kind of um, this accidental benefit of living out there with my brother for those couple of years was like I was driving back and forth so much, and that was car time, and I was dedicating. And car, you're, yeah. it's like a nice little vocal booth. Yeah. You can hear yourself and monitor it. And yeah. there's, if, if it's just you in there, especially, there's no nerves. And so, yeah. if you can pick your nose while you're driving, right. you can sing while you're driving. <laughs> That's true. At the same time, yeah. like, you can whistle that way. I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I mean, that was how I learned to sing. And I mean, everybody's different, but it, you know, I still know I can be a lot better, but. It's, there's no substitute for the rigor, so I feel like yeah. no matter what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. some people are going to pick it up quicker or things, but I don't know. It's like anything. Mm-hmm. It's like right now in our, you know, I just moved to Fountain Square. It's a great street and it's a cool neighborhood, but I'm closer to downtown. You know, we have a right to have a, to own guns. I've never been a gun owner. I have family that is, but I'm like, well, I'm a homeowner here close to downtown. I want to get a gun. And in this, norm, this current climate, like about a week ago, I'm like, I'm getting one. Yeah. And same deal, though. I want, to, I want to be able to practice enough. I hope I never have to use it, and that's not the goal. But right. you don't want to be fucking caught off guard. Yeah, sure. It's not worth that. And if I have one, I want to be solid. But it's like anything else. I need to go shoot for you know, for a while and get comfortable with everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, not, it's like even with instruments, somebody, you know, if you haven't put in years of 
most likely, most likely, if you haven't put in years on an instrument and just really spent time, you know, time, you're not going to be pretty good, like great at it. Most likely, it's very rare, very rare, no matter what it is. So it's yeah. kind of like you got to put the time in. Yeah. You do, and you've got to enjoy it. So it's like if you have, if you love it, there shouldn't be an issue, right? Yeah, you know that. Yeah, for Pretty sure, man. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's almost like um, um, there there's a direct correlation between the time and energy you put in into it and what you're going to get out of it. And like, I think I think with a lot of people, what determines like the skills that they're going to excel at really comes down to what they actually have the patience for. You know. Mm-hmm. Because I have just about infinite patience for guitar, practicing the same thing over and over until it is just flawless, you know? I will, like, practice scales until I'm blue in the face. I'm fine. But if I had to practice, like, like painting, like, I would get frustrated with that. And I'm just like, I'm just like, yeah, this is, I suck. This is terrible. When it leads into, it's like, I think everybody, naturally, I'm a believer in, they do, you do have certain skills or talents or genetic things. I think anybody can do anything. It's going to take a lot more work for some people than others, but the same deal, like, you know, I don't have the talent for painting or drawing. I loved, I love that stuff. I wish I could, but Mm -hmm. you know, I don't think there would be enough of me spending years doing it to think I could. Right. Yeah. But that's, it's hard to say. But if you practice like three hours a day for 10 years, you know, like the Colby on the other side of that, it's going to be damn good at whatever that was, you you know, like, um, it's like a lot of skills and jobs, right? It's yeah. like people doing it. It's like, man, you got to spend the time. Yeah. I, read, I read a really good book about it called Mastery by Robert Greene, I think. And um, basically, he just examines all these different masters of these different skill sets. So like uh, uh, John Coltrane was in there. Yeah. And then um, um, uh, he examined uh, Darwin. Um gosh, who else? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, just people like that. And he kind of looks at their upbringing and he tries to find like commonalities between them. And like the best way that I can kind of understand mastery is like this. Um, it's basically a web of small, well understood concepts. So, so for music, like maybe a small scale or like a small lick or something like that. And you get really good at this one little thing then you move on and you get really good at this other thing. And then eventually it forms this web where it like readily communicates with itself. It's like building one idea is like one little neutron. And then eventually you have a web of neutrons and they're all firing and communicating with each other. And like, you got to put in that time to build those little nodes so that you have that web, you know, I believe it. And I, I, straight. Yeah. And I think it's, it's like different subdivisions of, whether it's music or art, right? If you're a musician, if you if you spend the years on guitar, then you could probably learn bass a lot quicker than a non-musician than mm-hmm. all these other instruments. You know, I grew up playing piano from as a little kid. Then I took bass lessons and did that for years, and then always kind of picked up on guitar. But then you know, I spent years years on guitar, and then I've been spending a few years on vocals, and it's like all these things. I feel like there's there's musical like I want to say skill or or mm-hmm. traits to all these to where, you know, if you've got all, if you got musicality here, it's easy to transfer. Right. right. As an artist too, you can paint or I'm sure you can draw pretty well. You can probably be able to sculpt better than a non-artist. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to, um, what well, your know, coordination what too. Like when you're mm-hmm. playing, like with me, like I almost feel like I was supposed to be a drummer just because I feel like I pick up drumming skill mm. quicker than others. But maybe that's because like I started playing guitar and like I developed this coordination between my right and my left hand that a lot of people don't ever really develop unless they've got a particular thing that they're working on that, uh, that requires this balance between these two different limbs, you know? But then, like, translating mm-hmm. that into drums, like, that's just a different form of coordination. So instead of, like, doing this and this, I'm doing this and this, you know? Like, maybe mm-hmm. that's part of it. It's like a, a broadening kind of um, contextual field, you know? Yeah. And there's overlap, you know, between the different instruments, even between entirely different skills, too. Yeah, dude, Fields is a great, crazy story, man. <laughs> Matt Fields. Oh, oh yeah, man. he's, he's awesome. awesome. He's, yeah, he's awesome. He's a fantastic drummer. And... We were middle school. He played. Uh, he was singer in one of the bands, and uh, I was in. You know, and he played guitar and stuff in other bands. But you know, he was he's such a goofball. He's he's such a clown, and it was great. You know, we were best friends in middle school. We're still great friends. And uh, in, in Goliathon, 
when he joined that band, I swear he'd only drum like one or two years. Mm -hmm. But he had some natural knack, dude. And he's, everybody saw him, and even all the great drummers around were like, damn, he's badass. Dude, it was <laughs> the same thing with Dan. <laughs> he Dan had so only weird. been playing for like one or two years when yeah. he started Dead Birds. Like, it was the exact yeah. same thing. That's they're funny. both unique in their way. They have their own, like, that's another thing, their own creative approach to it. Yeah. And, um, man, it was let it loose. I like to think that our group helped grow, make him get better, too, because he was playing with me and Chris and who'd been in... in We'd been in bands a long time, and I know Chris was in, you know, jazz band high school, and you know, I know Derek could play guitar a long time, and um, but he actually didn't join till later. But mm -hmm. Neil had played a long time. I'm pretty sure Justin Ray played guitar for a long time. He was or he was bass player for, at that before me. So, but anyhow, my, what I'm just getting at is that um, he was just crazy cool unique story man because yeah. he was so like it's, it's rare that you can go from like not playing until within like a couple of years you're badass and everybody in town is like <laughs> god and drumming like i love drumming but the footwork is tough to me even getting that muscle work it's the hand work's definitely a lot closer and i think maybe all the hand work instrument playing yep. But, yep um i think you get some of the most creative stuff that way too yeah sometimes but I always love yeah. Fields' drum kit too, man. His just huge, but oh, yeah. like got the bottom basic, kit for, like yeah. that huge bass drum. <laughs> and what did Bob he have? Fouts. <laughs> really? Yeah, he bought that. Oh, from man, Bob. rest in peace, Bob oh, Fouts, man. man. That was a bummer to hear about. Yeah, yeah. big time, man. Um, yeah, he he bought that from him. Right? We did our first Goliathon record through him. If anybody nice. didn't know that, so it's, I didn't know it's that. It's a rocker. No. Oh yeah, no way. It's called uh, "Without Further Ado," uh, but it's. That's online. Uh, I believe YouTube's best spot, but yeah. it's a rocker. It's a great album. Bob Bob produced it. I remember uh, being over in his basement, Basement Rage. Um, actually, that one I'm pretty sure is 10 year anniversary right now. We're gonna, uh, yeah, we're gonna pop on the media, year. dude, and yeah. and boost it. You guys it, still have a website, Goliathon.net? No, nah, I don't think it is. Oh, um, man, I know. I probably, you know, I got the. Shame. I know. We could probably make that happen again, couldn't we? Hey, we uh, I know a guy. Yeah. Who knows a guy? He did pretty good on the Status Fo site. Hey. He did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Check that out. Statusfo.co. Shameless plug. <clears throat> yep. Statusfo.co. We got some great videos for the genius Brad Daly. Oh, yeah. Those videos yeah. are good, dude. Those are fun. Yeah. That's another thing. I, I didn't really talk much about him, but a fellow freelancer I've done video sports video work with, he, um, he, he no longer does that. He's just a professor full time at Ball State for advanced video. But his name is Brad Daly. Super cool dude, man. One of the best dudes I've, you know, one of the best dudes you can meet, really. And he just he heard some of my demos when we were working together four years ago, and he was like, "Hey, man, want to make a music video?" I was like, "Hell yeah, hell yeah, let's do it." You know, what are your expectations? You just hear somebody. I'm like, "Sure, we, I'm sure it'd be fun." But we start doing it. I was like, "Fuck, like this dude's for real, man." He, <laughs> oh yeah. Radio edit. No. Oh, no, no. no. Feel free. Say, no, you're fine. Say, Fuck you, FCC. Get out of my biz, <laughs> man. I think uh, Nick just became aware that the camera's there. Oh, yeah. No, no, no I, I got just, you. Oh, I was just making sure I had to <laughs> step away to, he was, um, to empty my fluid set. Oh, I guess so that's oh, fine. I got you. I think you're sure it's not brilliant. They're emphasizing yeah. to the crowd. Is, is everything you with that? your mic okay? You were kind of... Yeah. No, I'm just oh, okay. resetting myself so I wasn't clanging around, getting up and down. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think thoughtful. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. thoughtful. Everybody's yeah. coming through nice and good. Brad, is he is he the dude that's in the Propagated Sounds video? No, that's Warren and Larry. Warren's Warren's my vampire buddy. Did did Brad do both of those videos? He did. The, Brad did both. Nice, and man. we had a third that we haven't released and we might not. I never really completed it for Equinox and it had a lot of people in it. Um, but we added some guitar from Jason, so it made sense if we were going to have the video be complete, we needed Jason in it because we used everybody else. And But then Derek was no longer part of the band and then Ryan isn't, so now we've got old members, which doesn't matter. But um, it wasn't more of a story. It was just more like like colors and things and more aesthetic, but I you know, should be working on some more soon here. And uh, he wants to get some live footage and he's always wanted some, but I think we're close to that time to where we get this room done. We could get some cool live takes going. Nice. Um, okay. yeah, he's, he's great dude. And he did, you know, he, he did it for the love of it, man. It's the passion. And to me, he's the sixth man in the band right now, the fifth, mm -hmm. but like that, that mentality, because I feel like he brought this great visual element you know, just like with them, they always had Jaron doing this great live video display, and it's like, oh, yeah. it adds so much, you know, that's yeah. that's a key. And you're not a musician per se, but you're part of that, the act and the group, and same with Brad, you know, having him kind of design the visual lay, layout for the live show, we're gonna have some 
uh, projector or some kind of video element that he's going to put things together. You know, it's not it's not going to be uh, probably as much like you guys because I, I felt like um, you guys had your unique way of using projector. You know, I don't know. I feel like Brad is going to be. Um, I don't know. I'm more, I'm gonna let him do his thing, even right. It gets yeah, back to that whole point, it. like those just music videos, man. Yeah. Yeah, we had ideas, and everybody has ideas. But at the end of the day, I'm like, Brad, what are we doing? You know, what do you want to do? What's your take? And he makes beat sheets, man, and long lists. We spent, we spent a lot of time, man, on these videos. Even that first one, we spent a course of weeks kind of compiling uh, props and outfits, and we shot different scenes. I cut my hair, and we got different settings. And he just did it for the love of it. You know, I ended up paying him what I could, but he. I guess not why he did it, you know. To me, he's like got equity and, you know, like everything we do, you know. He's, uh, then the next one we was, we spent probably two full days, you know, for a three minute video. So it's like he's not, not bullshitting around. You know, yeah. I love it, man. Everybody's That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's cool to have somebody who's like, he's approaching it like we are to the music. Like, I'm not trying to half ass it. You know, if you're going to do it, do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another. The motivation, you're you know, do it, do, do it. it. I got to do a number one here. You guys can carry the combo for a minute. <laughs> Get it oh, out go for it, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, empty it out. I, uh, I, I <clears throat> pardon me. I, uh, I really, really like Colby's approach overall to mm -hmm. to working on like a. Well, so he's working on an album, essentially. He's working on like a, a large project that's comprised of a bunch of different pieces in the form of songs, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's got all of all of these people involved and and like he touched on, you know, using them interchangeably based on their, their skill sets. But we talked about what herding cats. Yeah. And instead of herding cats, he's just letting creators create. And it sounds right. like the project's evolving into what it's supposed to be organically, which is really really cool to I'm, I'm just i'm way into this conversation yeah yeah um i i'm like really really uh uh i don't want to say like shocked because i don't have like a starting point to like be shocked from but i'm really impressed with like with uh like th how in-depth we're going into right. into colby's process so yeah uh big big props to him and his uh potty break absence for yeah. For for giving us all this awesome information. Yeah, dude, he's uh, he's he's definitely a super talented guy, man. Oh, like yeah. every everything he's been a part of has been awesome. Um, and and you you were just hearing Status Quo for the first, and yeah. you haven't heard Goliathon yet, no, correct? Not okay. At all. Uh, when you get a chance, definitely check out uh, Status Foe's video on statusfoe.co. Uh, okay. uh, he's got a couple of videos on there, the ones that he was talking about that Brad did. Um, uh, but they're, they're, they're clever, man. They're, uh, like, they're, the, in my opinion, they're what music videos should be. Like, nice. In my opinion, I'm, uh, my, my personal taste, I'm not crazy about um, of watching a... Um, a band basically mime their own song because I know sure. they're miming it because I know that they recorded it in a studio. You know, yeah. if they're playing it live, that's different. I'm way into that, but like kind of miming it and lip syncing to it. I've never been crazy it's about weird. that. So I think, uh, I like, I like music videos that have a more creative element to it. So one of the ones he did was, um, was uh, uh uh shit which one was it the the first song propagated sounds mm -hmm. and um and that one he the 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 idea was that uh he brings this guy into a tent and like he sits him down and he starts like performing like like magics like like tricks and stuff like that distracting him and then like hands kind of come out and basically rob this dude blind and stuff yeah. and like and the the undercurrent of the song was um uh, uh, basically, you know, his, his view on the government kind of doing the same thing to people sure. is a really good, like metaphorical overlay there. And it wasn't overly complicated. It was fairly, you know, it was fairly simple. Um, and you know, the, when, when you make, when you make videos like that, it just seems more authentic to me. Sure. Like it, it doesn't seem like having a video where you're miming your song, it feels, it's just like, there's this air of like fakeness to it. Right. Whereas Instead, we got this whole other thing that's like telling this story that overlaps with the song in right. an interesting way, and the visuals kind of move with the song, and I, I can dig that too. But the song almost becomes like the score of a micro movie, but like the thematic elements are yeah. overlaid. Yeah. yeah, that's that's super cool. Yeah, Brad's a film guy, so I think that's 
what's the big motivation behind it? You know, cinemata- cinematography. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I kind of overheard. I was, like, I was getting at refills. Um, same, man. I, I dig, like, unique concepts that are, you know, as you notice, we haven't, the first two, it was none of the band just sitting there playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. The second one, we pull out the guitar. As, yeah, and it's almost kind of making fun of that. It's like, pull it out. And it's, uh, he's not even playing the song. Uh, he's uh, just like, dude, 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 yeah. He's playing like, you know, he's playing, uh, and then I have like a glove on and shit. You yeah. Know? Um, it's that stuff I could get behind that. That's fun, you know, yeah. but like trying to sell me that you guys are playing right now. And yeah, I can't. I know, I mean, exactly. It must have to that's be. That's just me, you know. Yeah, there's there are some cool ones, but some of my favorite ones is when they do that to like a huge live audience or something. You look at like they have like some setting they run out, and you could tell there was a lot of I don't know effort and energy put in. But Production, yeah, yeah, there's so many. I, I, I say there's a lot of cliche videos. I'm not gonna name any, but there's it's like anything, man. You got to be kind of unique and creative with it. Yeah, so I think it's another element of having somebody like Brad who is a good outlet for him. You know, we did sports work together, but he was he's in. A lot less into sports than even me, and I'm moderately into him. Mm-hmm. But I like the job enough, and for him, he he was a professor full time, so he quit doing that. And even with that, he has students make videos. But this is kind of like his project, right? Mm-hmm. It's gonna be his baby. He always wanted to make music videos. He said so. It was a it was a great just like coincidental connection there, and you know, um, and I've kind of tried to be an advocate of that from from the get go. Was like even expressing to all the band members that it's like you know this is really Brad's thing and like just like all of them your instruments I'll let you do whatever you know that's what I want too I'm like mm-hmm. that's what I want it's like it's a simple moral thing like you think of bands where it's like play this or play that it's usually like it's gonna be a lot worse or uh, same with video everybody has ideas right yeah. I have all these great ideas I'd love to see a video but I'm like he's the one doing it and he's <laughs> the yeah. pro so I'll just let him do it and like you said so far I've had cool storylines that first one Status Machine, I, I did a little bit of help with writing. Uh, I mean, it's mostly him, but like even ideas thrown out there and character uh, creation that we had. Um, you, you start you start getting in, into like too many cooks in the kitchen type thing did. with some exactly. of those things. And like we, we were talking about when you were uh, when you hit the restroom, uh, 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 Nick was saying that he really liked how, uh, you know, breaking away from like the herding cats type of thing, you're kind of just putting people in their, you know, placing them and then letting them do their thing. And it's kind of making the project into what it's supposed to be. Right. I think a lot of any of the great musical acts, man, it's almost always that way, my opinion. I mean, you got their unique thing because we, you know, yeah, we're all, especially us that can play a lot of, you know, I feel like I played a long time where you can play more instruments, learn to play more instruments. So yeah, I could do a record on my own and I've got some cool ideas that, would be, you know, cool, but I think what these other guys are going to collectively kind of come up with is going to be better, mm-hmm. it's be at least more unique, right? More, and that's, that's kind of what you're going for, mm-hmm. I felt like. I think that's the biggest creative inspiration for me is just trying to be unique. Yeah, I've got influences, and but I don't, I don't sit, uh, what do you call it, set out to make any kind of sound and song or riff, and I think maybe that's a, it's a mistake maybe novice musicians or artists might make it's like who do i love and i'm trying to or i'm trying to do this i'm like i think it'll shine through when you actually do it so your your influences will be there but i think if you try to or if it's kind of a driver it's it's kind of counterintuitive to creativity right true mm-hmm. yeah so oh yeah i know <laughs> just i was down closer. the hall a little bit you're all right no, that's that's the same struggle I have too. Is and it, and it pervades all forms of creativity for me. If I have um, a particular idea that I want to do, mm-hmm. like let's say I want to paint a thing, like I want to paint this thing, it always turns out like shit. I'm always oh, like yeah. I always run into a wall. I'm like this sucks. I suck. Clearly I suck because this sucks. I'm making this. I'm doing my best right now. This is terrible. <laughs> but. When instead I change my um, approach to just like playing with the color, you know, like I just kind of put something there and I'm like, yeah, that kind of looks like this. And I just kind of go with it. And then eventually sometimes it makes it into something interesting. It's the same thing with music with me. Like I'm messing around and I come up with a riff and I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. Maybe, you know, like instead of being like, I'm going to do 
a song in 4-4. It's going to be six minutes long. It's going to be about yeah. my dog, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to sound like this guy mixed with yeah. this guy and this yeah. guy. Yeah. And, you know, some people, that's how their process works. Yeah. Like, like your, true. your process for status quo and probably for Goliathon is mostly like a collaborative kind of like amorphous thing yeah as opposed to some bands they instead they have like a central person who's a dictator in a way not in a negative yeah. sense but like they're they're kind of they're they're directing the thing yeah. and um they come up with the gist of the song and then everybody has their input and yeah. you know some some approaches work better for others some people like working in that environment some yeah. people like being that guy you i know? like well sure. i like structurally like with all these i've pretty much written them like structurally from start to finish and the changes and things. And now they there have been evolutions through working on the songs with bandmates. Like, yeah, let's only play this part like this. Let's play that part twice as long and do that, which is cool. And and not the end. But I think as far as the cohesiveness, like at least from my end, there's and so far it's, it's worked out well. We're like we pretty much have the structure, but then within that, everybody do what you want. And if they do have ideas, though, I am open. But... I feel like I've been able to write structural like songs start to finish. And other bands, like I know Chad says, it's another thing. There's like no right way, right? There's all these different ways. And that's mm -hmm. maybe why mine's maybe a little weirder and quirkier. But, um, you know, some bands can get together and start jamming and come up with ideas. Maybe with Goliathon, I felt like we did more of that. You know, it was more, it was more of a collaborative uh, collage to begin with, Goliathon. Status quo is more, uh, these are songs I started writing and I started adding band members, but the creatively I wanted to keep it like inspired by everybody and everybody be, a, you know, have their cr creative input. And, right. Um, so like, so like Goliathon, let's say for example, I mean, one of my favorite songs is Riot in Cairo. Like how did, how did that one start? That was the song. Chris, i pretty sure come up with that riff. Okay. And, the and dun, dun, dun. Or is it like, man, there's so many riffs in that song. I can't I even know. think of. Well, I think he, he started the song and like um, like the arrangements of it and the different sections, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. You know, we all just kind of, I feel like, man, I can't, it's hard to quite remember, but that was one of his, you know, and he wrote a lot of the songs really early on when it was just Neil, Chris, no, before Chris, it was Neil Fields, um, Justin and um, Christian. Like Neil wrote these songs, or their instrumental. It was like a band for a year or something. Played a couple of sh little shows here and there, and then Chris and I joined. Chris became the singer and guitar and sax, and I played. I was just going to be organ, and then Justin at the time, like they were putting the band back together, kind of like they took a break, and then Justin just didn't really want to be a part of it anymore so I'm, he's still a real good friend but i was like well shit man if he's not going to show up on bass i'll just play bass too because that's my main thing end up doing more bass than organ but i that's why i did both of those a lot because i almost started playing organ for the band mm -hmm. and then after uh you know chris started writing songs lyrically but that one i know kind of jumped all the way away from that first answer that's a chris song though that's a chris song yeah. okay so i'll give i'll give him like a, uh, at least he like at least he like came up with the seed and yeah. then like which he, developed into the yeah, song. Yeah, and he did yeah. most of them, and I had a few like um, but I only had a few like kebab. That was probably my favorite one I come up with on the second album, which is instrumental. And a couple, and then of the two albums, I maybe had you know a few that I come up with, maybe a handful of the musical ideas. You know, Chris did all the lyrics, and then I think pretty sure Chris come up with a lot of the other songs, and then. The other guys probably had they had a lot of influence in them, right? So, I think the initial spark I felt like I felt like Chris and I were the mostly him though, like the song spark creation. Mm -hmm. you know? And I don't know. I think that just naturally falls into a singer's role, and especially if you're a singer playing guitar, mm. as if you know you're multi instruments. So I feel like it's very common in bands. That's a good point. Yeah. Is, uh, they, they sort of have an idea of how many times they want to do something. Yeah. You know, that was something that was really tricky. And Dead Birds Adore Us is where, I mean, how many times does mm. it go from this before it goes to that? You know, like it, it almost seems like in a way, you, uh, in the beginning anyway, when you're stacking on instruments, those 
separate instruments start helping inform those decisions yeah. because then you got a guy that's like, man, I really, I'm feeling four on this thing. And then like, you got, well, all right, I got the singer. I got like six lines for it, you know, and then you, you meet in the middle or you, you argue and call each other names. But um, <laughs> no, It's all part of know? the process. Yeah. yeah. The des- decision making, it's, gr- it's helpful to have more minds and more, more input. It's helpful. Sometimes things, there's just no right answer. Or there's so many options. And how do you do it? You know, what do you like? And um, just like you said, you know, there, there's no rules. There's no right way to make music. You know, there's only mm-hmm. really your own standards and what you think is good and what's yeah. useful, you know, like. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, opinions. Everybody has their own and their own musical tastes. And I'm an advocate of everybody just loving what they love and chilling off, giving other people shit. Right. Like yeah. let people like what they like. And if you don't like it, yeah. You know, you don't got to make a deal of it, you yeah. know, because there's a lot of shit I don't like, but I'm just going to, people are going to, people like music I don't, but, you know, stuff I like, I'm like, that's, that's you know, that's what I like. That's, that's what, yeah, that's what, what, like what, that's what like. it is. You like what you like, like I like. like what I like. But there's no, it's harder to be clear cut, but it's easier to be, for people to be, if they're being truthful, you can admit talent in different field, in different genres. Like, yeah, they're talented. It's not my shit. Even, there's still a scale and. I don't know, um, but that's a great thing of art too. Though it connects, you can connect. You pretty much find anything that connects to you, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's an artist, and you know, Rush is my favorite band, but a lot of people hate Rush, and it's like, oh, duh, yeah. of course. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. But um, just like a lot of these pop stars that people love, I probably, you know, like. Ugh. Yeah, not all of them. I, like I, like, I do like yeah. some of them. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that I like, I can yeah. totally see why other people don't like yeah. them. Like, I, you know, I can yeah. see why people wouldn't like Getty Lee's voice. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. I can, I can, I can get I can that. I mean, it doesn't bother me. You know, right. but um, uh, yeah, you can always understand at least. Like, and it's, it's, uh, yeah, everybody's gonna have. I think in those things, they exactly, everybody's gonna have really their own opinions, and they all can be equal and. Everybody does have, even leads into societal, you know, having the right to say what you want and believe what you want. And I think all that's great. And it only becomes dangerous when it's based on, like, anti-science or anti, like, things that are proven, right? You know what I mean? That can harm people. Like, if your way of thinking is it can really harm people, something extreme is, you know, take this and, you, you know, you'll be fine. Everybody's poisoned or, I don't know. Yeah. Or, like, or, or something as far as... Um, you know, it's just got to be morally based, I feel like. I mean, right. people but people can be immoral. They could be dirt balls and pieces of shit, and they could say what they want, and everybody's got to accept that right. I feel like I feel like it becomes harmful if you're influential, influential and you, you know, look at certain Preaching things. Eugenics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. The good thing is, like, <laughs> genetic... Uh, uh, genetic mutations and diseases can be solved through great science like that, but there's such darkness to it. Like where it got founded on darkness, but the good thing is now that people are able to be healed through gene therapy. I mean, it's, it's Mm. possible. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And be able to find, um, cause I watched some stuff on PBS, like down to the genome and where in the DNA, like which strand of DNA had the weird, um, mutation. And if they can find that, then they can, I can solve it. And there, isn't there like four different letters or something? There's four, yeah, different, four different proteins and DNA. Yeah. Yeah. But with computer yeah. science and modern computer science, they've been able to get a lot better at it. But it's a whole other world. Yeah, dude. I, uh, Fuck yeah, blockchain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The, what's that? What's that uh, documentary on on Netflix about? About gene therapy, what is it? Uh, oh, unnatural selection. Is that it? Uh, I don't know. I'm, oh man, I'm that's familiar. that's so good. No. It's. It's crazy That's how much mind blowing, yeah. yeah, advancements and like power and things we have have come about from negativity and war and dark shit. Mm-hmm. All right, like World War Two and all that, all that Nazi Germany's contributed to a lot of our science expansion, right? And, and the internet, just, uh, you know, like computers in general, like exploded after World War Two. They would have like killed all the all people. Are like, you know, they why didn't those? You know, a lot of the scientists got. Did some dark shit and we just brought them on. And yeah. The, the excuse is that Russia was going to get them if we didn't, which yeah. I'd rather have them than Russia. But Sometimes. And, yeah. Right, exactly. At least, at least take their, yeah. Uh, yeah, take their knowledge, right? Yeah. It's like this leads to another point, even public punishment. And I'm like, probably more right on this issue, but I'm like, if somebody does something crazy, fucked up, and they're going to get a death sentence or a jail sentence, especially if they have a death sentence, they should, 
just give them to scientists. I'm sure they do, and just like, study their brain, you know? Put them in the gallows, too. If they do something awful, like, don't give them a free, like, resort yeah. in prison for life. I mean, you got to, I don't know. I've heard, I've heard, okay. I've heard that argument for, like, uh, like uh, things like, like pedophiles and child oh, molesters yeah. and stuff. Like, these, these, these people that too. cause, like, so much damage and you can't just let them do what they want. That's n- never okay. But, like, uh, but instead taking time to like try to understand that and uh yeah hey if you got to dissect a few I you know, know to maybe prevent saying. people from getting yeah. hurt in the future i think i'm you know i exactly dude i'm like know. what better way i mean you make it a voluntary choice like hey spend the rest of your life in prison or you know, we'll just we'll just uh speed up the process and you'll undergo th- this procedure and that's that. I mean, you know, if, if they can sign up for it willingly and, uh, you know, or free if they, up some funds and we all benefit from acquiring knowledge, I, eh, oh, I even know, if I'm they all went, for science. Yeah, even if they die, like what rights, you lose rights. That's part of our legal system. Like if you do awful, heinous shit like that, it's like once, once they're dead, you, know, you don't have to kill them, but I'm like, you know, your organ donor, <laughs> well, yeah. there need to be fucking, all of them need to be, like you said, there can be stuff learned probably. Yeah, and but, I mean... Yeah, everybody yeah. has rights, but at some point, you're going to get banished from the tribe. I know. You know we're going to kick you the fuck out, and you're going to have to deal with the bears by yourself. You know? yeah. like, good luck. You know? It's true, man. <laughs> you, uh, yep, got to gotta function as a good member of society. We went to a, a, an odd and potentially unsettling place all oh, of a that's sudden. Okay. That's <laughs> where these, uh, that's where these things dark, happen. Cre- you dark know? creativity yeah. here. Yeah, that's Cause true. just like he said, you know, when he, yeah. um, when he's putting together songs, he just starts with the musical like kind of theme. And then that out of that words start coming. And then of course he's interacting with the words and connecting it with other ideas. And it turns into this thing that's kind of like personal to him. That's, sure. uh, you know, these, these, um, uh, you know, these views on, on, on politics and stuff and like, uh, especially like things like the deep state and like kind of like conspiracy kind of things like, Hey, I see you, what you're doing. You know, something mm-hmm. kind of fucked up over there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of bullshit, but there's a lot of truth. And I think yeah. the more noise that gets pushed out, even the current times, man, I feel like it's so obvious you step back, but centuries ago before printing press, I mean, knowledge was so scarce and you, it was only kept at royals and elites. And then once printing press, I feel like everybody could at least get books. And then literacy was still low, but I felt like it helped transition and more people learning stuff, right? And then then it got to where radio news and then TV news, and that's where we're getting information. And now we've got so much shit. There's it's a lot of fake much. news. There's too much. It's too much. So no, on any issue, and it's like data is only good if it's clean and reliable and it's valid. Right. And there's so much false data and things that get thrown out there to muddy Truth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Deliberately, Bloody deliberately put out there yeah. to like to dilute it, you know, yeah. so people get to the point. That's where I, I stood with the whole COVID thing with it, like starting up like any any type of issue like that, whether it's like political or like uh, in this case, a biological threat to humanity, <laughs> you know, like. I, I tend to rely on the perspective of other people. Like I don't, I don't really voice my own opinion because I am not qualified to have an opinion on an infectious disease. So I'm just like, well, this person over here said this, this person over here said this, both of these people think it's dangerous and that I should stay home. But, uh, my acquaintance from Oklahoma says, uh, that uh, all the media lies all the time and I should never believe any of it. And I'm like, well, let's consider my sources here. These, these two over here, spent oh uh 40 years <laughs> studying these things like yeah. obsessively like i study music you know uh this dude over here uh has a smartphone you know <laughs> exactly <laughs> hmm. that's just the way that i look at it but like the whole covid thing like i wasn't able to make heads or tails after a certain point because conflicting credible sources and then you're just like well mask well no mask or yeah, and, de- we and deaths they had they had it at some points so they get ruled uh covid death it's like no that's not making the data false like that dude died oh he had covid at, he tested positive but he he died in you know car crash or he died of something else and um you know i, I think to your point I, I think it's real and even from the beginning i was i'm still cautious but i was like i was almost like most people getting kind of like super cautious and freaked out a little bit, like worried, mm-hmm. but 
as I've as time has gone along and I've seen some of that, I'm like, you know, some of it's bullshit. But I think it's real and, it, and it's anybody. It's it's like the Earth's round. Okay, I, I can't get behind <laughs> any flat Earth or ideas. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's so easy way to fucking prove it. There's so much science. It gets to science. People are like, you know, people could be religious and believe what they want. I don't care. But you know, it's, as long as they're peaceful and things. But you can't deny science. And like this morning, I saw a bird. I'm like, that, he's, that's descended from a dinosaur. It'd been around millions of years ago. And humans have only evolved like a hundred thousand years ago or a couple hundred thousand years ago or something like that. And so it's like, maybe I'm confused, but it's like, it, it's crazy how it's like, that's there's scientific facts behind mm -hmm. this. You know, I'm not even an expert at that, but yeah, people are like, oh, the earth's been around yeah, 3000 years. Yeah. Ago. It's like, come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. It's a uh, tough to swallow. <laughs> it's, I, I, I look at science as a process though. Like why, like, you can uh, just it, keep it'll, it will, it will like, cause we have, um, you, you know, we have barriers to our objectivity, like that just by being creatures, like really our senses are only openings to yeah. our brain, you the know, quantum world's so yeah. unknown still. Yeah. yeah. And like, there's no way I can tell right now, like what's happening in India because there are barriers to my, you know, so, so science, uh, will basically overcome those with time eventually you know so it's a i look at it as a process like i can't take science for uh the gospel you know but i'm like okay like i i think about it scientifically I'm, okay this is what science is saying right now based on these studies and based on like this particular data set you know like mm -hmm. it's almost like when you look at these things with you know the thing in mind you know like basically looking at, uh, at it in the context of like, this is the actual information I have instead of applying a belief to it. Like, well, this is definitely this because science says this. That's you know? true. I mean, it's, it gets, a lot of shit gets disproven. But I think the beauty of it is it, it just becomes stronger. That's all it does. Right. Like, as it, as it gets, all the other options get disproven. And over time, like you say, certain things. I mean, we can, as we know, currently there's a lot of shit we don't know that's, you know, going to develop and... Um, I think like math, mathematical, like science really gets proven by, you know, experimentation, but a lot of mathematical things, look like at engineering and all that. It's like, those are facts because look yeah. at this building and this yeah. bridge. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like there are definitely this machine, like, this flying machine. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, that, that process of, of developing those and, um, uh, and having, you know, um, uh, what is it? Peer reviewed kind of uh, culture where basically your entire community is trying to rip these ideas apart and then it escalates, exactly. you know, it gets, it, it improves from there and the ideas become refined from, you know, Newton's law of gravity to Einstein's theory of relativity, you know, like just, and like, it, it's so interesting too. I think, I think what, what gets me thinking about this is that, you know, Einstein's theory of relativity, that wasn't just uh, rejected by like, uh, I mean, it, it was just so widely ridiculed at the time, you know, like, and even at the same time, apparently Einstein, like, wasn't a big fan of quantum theory. Like, you know, there's right. just like people looking at the objective reality that it's this tangible thing. It's right there and I can see it. I, I, Nick doesn't see it so good, but I see it good. You know, I definitely, I see what he doesn't see, you know, everybody kind of has operates from that right, seat sure. of like, well, I, I'm right. First of all. And second of all, you know, like right. to me, I'm just like, man, there's, there's no possible way that I can know all the data there. Like my, and my map of the universe is just that it's a map and it can right. adjust at any time. If I have new information I can bring into that map. Cool. Uh, but I'm not going to get the map confused with the territory, you know, like the, that literal, the map is not the territory or, uh, the menu is not the meal as <laughs> Alan Watts said, you know? Well, I, I like in art and with interacting with other human beings in society and larger, like human issues, a little bit of humility and a little bit of nuanced thinking goes a very, very long way. Yes, it does. So. Absolutely. And Indeed. just operating from a place that's like, well, maybe I'm full of shit. You know, <laughs> maybe I read this totally wrong. And what helps me with that is just is really just not saying the word is like like um, like if I'm upset with somebody about something like I'll be like, man, it it seems that this I, I got the impression that or it seems 
Like that seemed disrespectful to right. me, you know, then, then I'm incorporating my nervous system into the observation and therefore right. whether or not it was intended, it's still accurate. This is my reading. Like my dude, my fucking Geiger counter over here is going off like that. And that's like, the, that's the only truth I know, you know? Um, mm-hmm. and then you get to more truth when you express those kind of things. When you say that, I'm like, man, that seemed you know, that hurt my feelings. Like that's, you know, that's applying to me. I'm not going to say you were being an asshole or like, uh, like you deliberately attacked me. Like I can't know somebody's intention. So I might be like texting culture amplifies it. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) yeah. yeah. For sure. How do you read this? So much, man. And we get back to a point through experience, you can develop your truths and interacting with people. And I think people have to be willing to change your mind on things. I think no matter anybody's opinion you look at that on any issue, the ones that um, encourage that I think are spot on, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to. If you can't, then you hold on to fallacies, you know? If you can't develop and, I mean, just like with science, I mean, minds get changed all the time. You know, it's proven weight. That isn't right. right. Yeah. It's a process, you know, it's a, it's a process towards objectivity and you have to be willing to move. Like you have to be willing to let everything you understand about the world be disproven. And the thing is, is like, I have that level of willingness with the flat earth thing, you know, Mm -hmm. do, I do not believe it whatsoever, but I am willing to let somebody prove me wrong. You know, like let's do some tests, you know, let's, let's test this right now. You have the whole of the scientific community versus a small niche on YouTube ad funded. You know, it's just like, mm, I don't know. That's not enough. You know, you got almost prob- got me. Yeah, a lot of problems with them. They refuse to listen to some of these scientists, prove them easy examples. Yeah. Like there's some easy examples of, of things and... Uh, but I'm not because an it's not in the rea- it's not in the reality tunnel. Yeah. They decided yeah. this is my reality tunnel. Yeah, this sure. is my map, and the map is the universe. And anybody, a- anything that conflicts with that, um, I can just ignore it and, and uh, yeah. dismiss it. Or they're stupid. You know, like one of those things. I can just. Right. This ties back into the musical thing too. I think being able to, you know, in, in the scientific way of like great art or artists and musicians like. In almost all these cases, there's probably so, there's so much thought and there's a lot of critique and a lot of effort. And I think years of different drafts and albums and records or paintings and things before a lot of the greats reach with their, their greats. You know, think of all the all the great masterpieces you see. I mean, they probably did dozens and hundreds of ideas before that, you know, mm-hmm. and um, not always, but it's, it's more that way. And I think back, you know, even growing up, you're like a teen and playing a band. It's like, oh, this, this is a cool song. It's the coolest thing I'll ever do. And then you go to another yeah. group. Oh, wait, this is going to be the coolest thing. Yeah. And it's hard in the moment to think that you'll ever surpass it. But I think almost always you, you lead to better stuff. It's just you get so attached and, and um, connected with your current music. And then yeah. all this t- effort and blood, sweat, and tears. And once you put it out, it's, it's like... Um, that's something for me though, but like a lot of these, I've spent so much time on. By the time I put it out, I'm like ready to Move look on, on the next. Done, but I think that's a good thing because yeah. there's been times I remember back old bands like you do a record, put all this energy, and you're done. It's like oh, I gotta go write new stuff now, and it's like yeah. a pressure. But if it's a constant flow of ideas, then you can have so much content, and you can get done with this one set and have these others that have been working. You don't have to, you know, be forced to make up crap that's not any good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Damn, it's that, a long one, isn't it? No, I had a, uh, I had something there. Shit, what was it? Oh, uh, uh, what, what were you just talking about? Um, the, uh, <laughs> I, I know, I, try not uh, to say that too many times on the podcast. Yeah, it was, what it was did about you just uh, putting say? ideas, being um, critical and I don't know, thorough on ideas, and you know, being attached to what you're creating now. Right. And, oh, and really, right. And it's like a lot of things in life. You can't. It's hard to. You can kind of imagine what feelings are like, but you can't replicate them. Like going to a concert, like that live feeling. Like you can't, not being at one, there's no way to replicate it. You know, it's that feeling or being with somebody or certain, whether it's friends or significant other or family, like you, whatever is like a good time. It's like that's the only way you can experience a lot of those things. I don't, I don't know how it ties into what we were just talking oh, about. Oh, no, no, that's like, that perfect. You jogged yeah. my memory. Like one of the thoughts yeah. that I had when you were saying that is like, I, I like to look at um, um, the, the creative work, whatever it is, like whether it's a performance or whether it's an album or something like this is an entire lifetime in the making. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like this one thing is like, 
it's it's taken an, an entire life up until that point to make that sound, oh, yeah. make that album, you know. Um, yeah, and, and and with everything, every album, any little work of art, anything that was like entire lifetime in the making, and then that's drawing on entire other lifetimes, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's all like those works of art, the albums, the great albums, the great masterpieces. They're like like snapshots in history, you know, not of history itself again the map isn't the territory but kind of how we saw it back then you know and then the internet happened and that just exploded yeah. everywhere and yes. all we have are god awful memes <laughs> i love it though it's a, it's a fun time another though. form of artistic expression uh, yeah it is sure. I, it is i'm, I'm a well silly. done meme it's like with anything there's good ones and there's bad oh, yeah. yeah a level of of skill there i mean, I mean yeah there's you know. it's an interesting idea encapsulating an idea you know a lot of people aren't thinking about it like that they're just like oh this is funny you know but like you really are just capturing the small essence of a thing and yeah that's 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 cool indeed wait till people make money on memes Ooh. i bet some people do like I bet, probably yeah. so yeah. i mean if you've got like a if you've got some sort of like an instagram page with a hundred thousand followers oh yeah and you're just cranking them out yep. oh yeah <laughs> gross oh. Well, I think uh, good, we're we're about in an hour and a half. We can start yeah. wrapping this yeah, up. Yeah, that's a good good segment there. So uh, obviously, we can check you out at statusfo.co, statusfo.co. Right. But where else can we learn more about Colby Holmes mm -hmm. and what you got going on? You can also on, follow buddy? me uh, on Placebo Amigo <clears throat> on Instagram, Placebo Amigo. The studio mm -hmm. doesn't have a name yet. Um, it might involve Placebo Amigo. Okay. The record label on the first Status Fo record is Placebo Amigo. Migo Records, just because you can make your own through DistroKid, why not make up a fun name mm -hmm. instead of being DK00574, whatever yeah. <laughs> they're going to give you. But um, yeah, so you can check me there. Um, don't creep me too hard. Okay. No. But yeah, statusfo.co is a good way. Instagram. Cool. I'm on the Facebook, but I've just uh, set my lock to 30 minutes a day because it's nice. getting Toxic. over it, man. Yeah, I just want to see funny shit and, yeah. you know, but. Get in, um, get out. You can also reach me at three one now. Ladies, you can yeah, also. you can find me on this dating app. No, <laughs> um, Fountain Square. I'm a resident now of Bates Hendricks. So if any of y'all are out there, yeah, man, Fountain let's Square meet is up. Pretty rad. I'm I'm kind of ready for You're somebody. I really yeah. wanted to go grab some coffee from Square Cat Vinyl before I came over here, but... Um, I ground you up some here. We had some... Oh, we, yeah, we definitely had some coffee happening. That was good, but, you know, I like dropping into local businesses in Fountain Square. Oh, know, big time, man. I can't wait to get back out, get yeah. in the shows, like we are saying. Everybody's, yeah. Hopefully, the good rebound is we'll have more show attendance once we're allowed. Hell yeah. yeah but, I, think, I think we will. People are itching to get out yeah, and do something fun, you know? So. Yeah, big time. Well, this you can reach cool. me there. Maybe reach me in, here in the future. Um, yep. I mean, pretty soon yeah. you plan on for this uh, studio. You, you plan on um, uh, renting out the space commercially. Yeah, is that's that right? True. It's true. Um, like I said, no, no, quite working name. I might, might make one. You mm -hmm. know, I was like placebo me go. Is when I made Instagram, which had to come up with a handle, and um, for that, I was like, I like the concept because. We're in the age of a placebo amigo to where you've got 5,000 <laughs> Facebook friends. Like, is it a really a, a, me, a friend of yours or it's more a placebo effect? Like, uh, yeah. to make you believe that we're friends. But because I, I run into people even I don't, I've never met, but I'll see them out in public. And usually girls because you just, I mean, but not always. Sometimes dudes that I'm like, oh, I haven't met you. But I know who you are. We know you're Facebook. <laughs> usually I say something that's awkward, but I'm like, I got to yeah. say hey because it's. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I feel creepier. I know. You're a real person. Yeah. Look at this. But yeah, follow Status Fo. Um, status Fo. Status message me on Facebook. But yeah, we'll rent it out. Hopefully, uh, you know, be a rehearsal space, um, podcast space, uh, recording space eventually. Like, it's near near term, but all the gear's not here yet. But as, as uh, they all can see, we got some... Uh, yeah, we got some soundproofing foam, foam here. Yeah, we, uh, uh, we completely rigged just, up this uh, amazing <laughs> mic stand here. Yes. Um, hopefully, we will rectify that soon. Yeah. But uh, no. Yeah, I'm hoping to you know have friends and other local musicians, artists need a space. You know, come. Yeah. Come use it up. Come uh, have fun. And, it's uh, sitting here. It's definitely yeah. a room, and that's exactly what we needed. Yeah, good, good location, ceiling size. Yeah. Good ceiling size. Yeah. I can do this. I know. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's able to walk around the whole house and look like he's like, yeah. free. 
my shoulders. Oh wait, that feels good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But also, um, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. yeah. Fun time. Status Fo, definitely check them yeah. out. They're uh, the the music's amazing. And then yeah, yeah. statusfo. Co. Okay. There's there's the entire album on there yep. and the the videos and the lyrics and everything. And, and, and you know, I know I made that. He did, happen. he did great work. I also use Squarespace, but they don't sponsor us, so I'm going to edit That's that right. out. Yeah, he <laughs> can do work for you, too. Yeah, we'll yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, right on. Thanks for, uh, thanks for let, first of all, yeah, again, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for letting us use this room. Oh, yeah, this dude. is awesome. Right welcome. And, I'm, I'm glad to, you know, offer it up with us, you know. Yes. And I'm glad it was somewhat, first at least put together halfway, so we're, we're getting there. Yeah. We'll see some progress during... By season two, man. Be- yeah, season two, this is going to be, man, Joe Rogan, eat your heart out. <laughs> but uh, no, thanks for using us, uh, letting us use the place, and uh, thanks for being our first ever guest. Indeed. Yeah. I'll be sure to check out Indeed. those music Thank videos you. shortly. Oh, yes. And, uh, and also uh, come visit us on our yet-to-be-created social media. Yeah, right. um, forging Flame. Forging Flame. Uh, we're going to, we're going to be places right now as it's check recorded. The comments. Yeah. Check the comments <laughs> That's right. right now. Nothing exists that we're like, we're literally, we're literally hitting the ground running. We don't quite know what we're doing. Like I know how to do production stuff, but like, you know, this you know, is an airing done. like right now. So I think by the time you air, we, we might have. You might have something. Who knows? Yeah, I don't I'm know. Right, yeah, I'm that's, not that's, that's your the idea. No, that's okay. the idea for sure. Yeah. I want to have all the social media and all the website stuff, and I'm also going to do vlogs and like have blogs for each episode. It's all going to. So as hit you all are, while. we're coming in hot. Oh, yeah. sun. As you're yeah, all are like, watching literally. from your, your radioactive bunkers. <laughs> yes, as long as we survive, forging flame is coming in hot, and we'll yes. uh, we'll wrap it right there. Thank you again, Colby. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Gratitude, right. love, peace.